Hello, everyone, and welcome to the third and final round of the 2022 Shelly Sharp Memorial presented by Spinners on the Green. Vista Del Camino is the venue. We're here with Drew Gibson, who started at 17 under, along with this man, Anthony Barella. Adam Hammes, your defending champion, was one off the pace, and Jordan Castro came into round number three at 15 under. We're heading into the back, so we'll give you a score update in a moment as we look at full 10. Really the nemesis that we found of Anthony Barella in round number two. 651 feet, we've got the OB sidewalk and walkway on the right. Also then water OB on the left, along with the sidewalk and a Mando they must navigate. That's just off the tee, you can see the tree on the left. You have to go inside that. So AB cutting it off short. Oh, and the tree this time prevents him from carrying out of bounds. It has to be in the back of his head. He took a double bogey six here in round number two. Oh no, and that was straight into the ground by Hamas. Drew's got a pink hatchet that he rolls and that one hits the tree and stops. So three less than ideal drives. AB is with the best result so far. Let's go. Stick go down. It. Go down. And we'll see how that checks up or not. The roller by Castro. Now that's gotten up and turned way more than he wanted and hits the tree on the left side, so Still an opportunity to save the par, but something, something's off there with Adam Hammes' release. And Drew trying to make up for the short drive. And that curls up into the right and will be out of bounds on the sidewalk. He's going to have an obstructed lie. Bushnell, edge rangefinder, tells us 387 to the pin. And that is deep for AB. He's actually got a putt back at us. Here's Hammes with his third. I don't want to be a jerk, Adam. You said that's the worst shot you've ever thrown. I'm gonna, I'm gonna go back to the tee shot actually. And if we're gonna give out, all right, I, we'll, we'll leave it at that. This is Gibson now with the obstructed putt, and it looks so good. Hamas, with three less than ideal throws so far, has the opportunity to save the par. Yeah, that is the struggle bus here for Adam. So uncharacteristic. Especially when he has the opportunity to save it with a good putt. And Jordan's putter has been. Well, I think it's been on. Maybe it's got a birthday hangover. We'll go with that. It was his birthday yesterday. I don't think Jordan drinks, but maybe his putter was. Seems a little bit wobbly. <laughs> Sometimes I just shouldn't talk. All right. A.B., a three-stroke improvement. And talk about a momentum shift and a, just an overall boost of confidence. Improves by three, and he's picking up strokes. Just like that. Gibson goes to 18 under. Barella's at 21. Full 10 usually doesn't provide too much craziness. It's 
in my opinion, a pretty solid birdie to get. You're usually not too mad with a par, but over these last couple of rounds, hole 10 has absolutely defined a few of these uh, rounds and the scores that they come in with. So we head over to hole 11. We're on our way back to Dukes. Well, it's a few miles away, but we're on our way back, pushing back another par four, 759 feet and plays along this slope the entire way. AB just in another <laughs> entirely different airspace than most people are capable of, him and Gibson. The lower line taken by Castro looks good. Of course, the out of bounds on the left side. Also, a couple of mandatories trying to keep players away from the sidewalk. You don't want it to go OB. You want it right there. That's a good spot. Plenty of trust. Just a matter of how does it stick. And it checks up. Nice shot there by Gibson. He's trying to recover from the bogey. Just not the angle that he needed. Castro likely looking at a par. He's three under for the round. Varela's four under through the round. And trying to get the five under. Again, the course continues to evolve, always trying to play into safety as much as they can. That's why you see a Mando on this left side tree. Players used to just go with a forehand out and around the tree. And of course that could bring the sidewalk into play and now they're forcing you to go up the middle. We've seen that change in the last couple of years and love the approach by Hamas. That one is dialed. And I wasn't expecting that much even of a bid by Castro. I just thought he was gonna give it a, a little bit more of a ginger approach, but gives it a bid. Barella, birdie. Trying to pull away from the card. He's at 22. I'm not even making a Taylor Swift reference. Oh, no. Slides out the right side. Tough to tell from my angle how right that was. These baskets usually will catch just fine on that right side, so maybe it was a little more right than even my angle provided. Tap in birdie, though, for Hamas. He moves to 20 under, still right in the thick of it. And Barella is at 22. Hamas is at 20. This coverage is only possible due to my Patreon subscribers and supporters. Very simple to do. If you want to support and want to see more action, that is exactly how it happens, is thanks to your support. Here's Kale Laviska, another check-in. He's at 19 coming into this hole. Sit down. And it checks up. So Kale, with that birdie, he'll move to 20 under and eight under on the round. Let's compare that. We've got 20 under by Hamas and our leader, 22 under by Barella. He's up on the shelf looking at a birdie. Hamas, hide with LaVisca at 20 under now. And just a 
I was just in awe. Not a shot you would expect to see from Adam Hammes. He turned one er over earlier, way back on hole three, I believe. That was a little bit out of sorts, and this one way turned over and out of bounds. He'll go to the drop zone. Castro. Right there, a little bit deep. Castro's going to need to get something going. He's three down on the round. Gibson's just one under on the round. He's hoping to double that here. This is the first OB shot we've seen from the drop zone that's provided. A little uphill. I want to say it's about 285, maybe, or 265, somewhere in that neighborhood. Uphill. I mean, if you need a screensaver, I think now's the time to do a, a screenshot. Oh, no. Rella doesn't get it done, so he's going to remain at 22. Castro hunting it down. He's at 19. Hamas with the penalty stroke. Still going to take the bogey. That's a four, and he'll move back to 19 under. Again, as Kale walked off this hole from the chase card, he was at 20. So he is currently sitting in second place. I'm going to tell you guys, sometimes the math is hard, especially when you're not doing U-Disc. We've got a battle, and <laughs> it's not all just on the lead card. We're going to head over to hole 13 after the long walk, 405 feet. You know, the players keep talking about, well, the power players, Anthony, Drew Gibson, keep talking about how the tree has been cut down on that high right side. So actually, uh, there is a route that you can go out and around that much easier if you have that kind of power. Big shout out, Pete Uliberry, providing the drone coverage. Not my best effort at editing them together, but you guys get the point. That is a beautiful shot by Castro. <laughs> I would challenge any of you, go out, attempt that route, with that kind of height, it's just unfathomable for me. Almost like saying that word. Not easy. Gibson, short. Varela, tracking. He almost rang it up. Or, correction, that was Gibson that almost rang it up in round two. Varela right there, looking at a birdie. We saw a mistake by Hamas finding OB water in a previous round. And this one, far left side. So he'll have a look. Well, that's kind of the danger zone on this hole. Yeah. All right, so Drew has a long look at birdie. He's going to need to get things going. He's three back up AB, and that one flashes in front of the chains but doesn't connect. Castro in a similar position score-wise. These guys are watching the scores. They know what's happening on the chase card. The putter just not on. Hamas trying to get to 20. Oh, that one just barely slides over and looking tougher and tougher for Hamas to three-peat here. He's picked up this event the last two years and then two weeks later goes on to win the Maricopa Open for the last two years. So he's got a pair of tournaments he's trying to three-peat on and that 
is going to be a significant roadblock right there. He's at 18. <laughs> AB with the birdie as a heckler drive, uh, rides by on his bike, making fun of us for watching disc golf and not football. Does he not realize he's not watching football? I, some people. There's stupid people out there. They're everywhere. All right, we're on... <laughs> Hole 14, the par four, 655 feet. You've got OB all along the left side, also a sidewalk on the right side that's out of bounds, and a couple of mandatories. Again, just trying to keep players away from throwing too far to the right and flirting with that sidewalk. And textbook. There's the chase card up ahead. Gonna get another check in with them here soon. Nick Newton from the Chase Card had an incredible start. Kale Lavisco also a solid start, but really turning it on in the middle half of the course. Great shot by Gibson. Adam doesn't love it, but the result is just fine. And no, there wasn't a memo with pink shirts. I mean, I showed up with a pink shirt. AB had a pink shirt. We'll call Drew's pretty much a pink shirt. 332 to the pin. That is Beautiful. It's a little flip up mid range. Gibson follows suit. That's a great shot. Right now, Gibson four behind. They remember they both came in at seventeen under. Flawless forehand attempt out of Hamas there. And I believe that was 285 to the pin, if I recall, when he had got things going. Taking a look at the gallery that's taking in the action. Castro hasn't been hot with the putter but connects with this one. He's 20 under, still in contention, but AB wants to answer. This is the longest game of statue I've ever had to play. I was already in position, just standing there, just waiting, don't move. I'm wearing a pink shirt. I'm a little wider than that basket, or a lot wider. No big deal. AB, focus, 24 under. We got a star frame. So doing some work out here. Full 14, giving it up. Shout out to resistancedisc.com, primary sponsor of Adams, along with a number of other players, but also huge supporter of this weekend's coverage out here at the Shelley Sharp Memorial, presented by Spinners on the Green. The par four, hole 15, 741 feet. Yes, Anthony Barella has eagled this. Oh, get his own board, though. oh, oh. bucket. Trouch. Oh. oh. <laughs> Those double rams, man. Well, you got to. Uh oh, oh, oh. Oh, oh, that's a travel. Oh! <laughs> that's just a Euro stat. That's all it was. 
Oh, 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 excuse me. Okay, we'll be quiet. All right, all right, Drew's getting ready for his post-disc golf career as a NBA commentator. And we see A.B. really take something off there. The last two days, he's gone with the big turnover shot. And today, he goes just with the forehand shot. So certainly some strategy there. Jordan's roller gets just a little past A.B.'s forehand. This is the pink hatchet here by Gibson. Oh, you got to like the line there. And right now, this group's just got to be thinking, is there any way to catch A.B.? We are running out of holes. I'm done. I want to go home. <laughs> and Hamas has had enough, unfortunately. And, well, he later told the crowd who was thinking about retrieving it, I don't ever want to see that disc again. So maybe he just wants to support his sponsor, Resistance Discs. Free shipping, anything over thirty dollars. Use the code DG guy. I mean, that's 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 an option. But unfortunately, it looks like Hamas has given up any chance at his three peat now. The question is, can A B hold on? The chase card is still pushing, kind of like the shot, and that is way up there. In fact, you're just gonna have to trust me. It was a good shot. I couldn't see it. Jordan taking a similar route. Also, right there. You know, when you're when you throw as far as Drew here on this drive, you've got options. You can play the high hyzer, which got caught up. You can now go up the middle a little bit easier. You got so many more options provided to you when you get a drive that that you know with that much distance on it and Hamas short and this is a missed opportunity all day for Drew he had such a powerful drive and so for him to not walk away with a birdie here certainly feels like giving one up Hamas for bogey He'll fall back to 18 under. And now finding a little bit of his groove. We got Varela at 25, distancing himself from everyone else on this card. The problem is that may not be good enough. Castro, 21. We've seen the struggles that Barella's had on hole 16. He's had OBs the previous two rounds. And here it is, 380 feet playing through this initial low hanging ceiling. Then most of the players, if they're throwing a forehand are coming in just in front of this tree and then trying to get it to skip up to the pin. Also seeing some backhand line drives at it. Kale. We're checking with him. He's 10 under and at 22 down, he clubs up. We've seen mid-range from him in rounds one and two. And this time he clubs up, and now he's looking at a birdie putt from outside the circle. <laughs> Seriously, count it. Kale, 23 under with two very birdieable holes left to go. So he's at 23, moving into hole number 17, and Barella's at 25. He needs this one to stop. And it does. The previous two days, he's rolled on the hillside out of bounds. Both days, walked away with the bogey four. Today, he's got a birdie look. Do a little turn and hit the tree. Hit the tree, hit the tree, hit the tree. Hit a house? Thank you so much. Hit a tree? 
Man, you've never wanted to hit a tree so bad before. That's definitely saved him from going out of bounds. Drew with just a mid-range. A little bit of power sprinkled in, a little bit of snap, I guess, but. It's gonna leave him outside the circle. Oh, I love the line here by Hamas. Oh, that's the one problem that can happen there. And that one curls up in front of the sidewalk, so he's not out of bounds. Castro, not much of an opportunity to do anything. And that might be a blessing in disguise. <laughs> I didn't expect Adam to really be giving that a full run, so I kind of had to rush over behind him to get the angle. Gibson's at 40 feet. Ice cream truck is playing, trying to put some sprinkles on it. <laughs> and the turnaround look. Him and AB, so AB right at circle's edge. Try not to be big putted. And very fortunate that sits for him. He's gonna remain at 25 under with two holes left to play. Kale sits at 23 under with two holes left to play and a ton of danger on 18, and certainly OB potential on 17. I don't know if your heart is racing, but this is crazy to watch it unfold. Thank you guys so much for the support and the love, your comments and, and accolades, whatever. They've all been amazing this weekend, thanks to Jamie, my host, thanks to the event staff, every single sponsor that's part of it, along with Spicy Boy, who's out there catching extra footage to make it all possible. Just so much love in Arizona, and I love me some hole 17. Easiest hole on the course. Just a pitch. Big shot here for AB. And a big time result. It looks simple, because it is, but you have to get it done. And AB putting himself right there. Got a little too much. I was gonna say height, but I feel like swoop. Swoop is the word. Felt like a little too much swoop there. That one's gonna be short and right. We'll see if Adam's ready to do some basket hunting. I promised him ice cream on the ace. I offered up ice cream and that wasn't good enough for the ace, huh? That was as close I've gotten in a while. Adam maintaining his spirits. I gotta give him credit for that. A little bit of a rough back nine for him. His chances at three-peating are no longer even possible, but keeping his head up. Castro, putter has been off. All right, I know I asked earlier what you would throw on hole 16. What are you throwing on 17? Easiest hole on the course. Leave that in the comments. That will make you eligible to win some of the giveaways that I've got. Here's AB, 26 under. That's nine under for the round, a solid round in itself. He has distanced himself from the card, but that's not his only concern. There's Cupcake in the background. He shoots a scorching 14 under on the round, the hottest round of the entire day. Unfortunately, he was on the fourth card when he did it, so he didn't push for the win, but big shout out to Jacob for the 14 under.
Big shout out to my Patreon subs. A number of you have jumped on board. Thank you for that support. That's how coverage like this happens. We're here on 18. We've actually got a pair of Mandos that will keep you from the right side sidewalk. And on the left side, we've got the OB water. Kale birdied hole number 17 to get him to 24. <laughs> and puts it right up there for a look. This is for birdie to go to 25 and LaVisca gets it, a 13 under. That's the second hottest round of the day and of the tournament, 13 under. He's at 25, and that means Anthony Barella needs at least a par. He's going for the layup. And narrowly gets the green flag. He was not planning for that much skip, and I, I legitimately was holding my breath. I could not believe that that had gone so far right and was threatening. I was told this is the Buzz Latte making its tournament debut. That's going to be out of bounds for Hamas. Castro, who just turned 28 the day before. Celebrating a birthday. I know also an anniversary of him and his significant other, his girlfriend. Fortunately, that's going to be out of bounds. I don't know what it's going to be touching. So AB needs to get up and down to maintain a one-stroke lead and secure the victory. He's got to go to the left of this Mando. Water behind. And he was that close to the Mando on the drive. But he is safe and needs the tap in three for the win. Can he do it? Here's Hamas from way downtown. So Hamas will finish at 18 under with the bogey. Here's Gibson. Six under, respectable round out here, but not enough. Jordan's drive. He's at about 38 feet. This is to save the par. Dang it. My, my first and last bogey of the tournament is on the last hole of the tournament. Dang it. <laughs> yeah. Uh, the your only bogey is the 54th hole. Adam bogeys. And now to officially dethrone his good friend, Anthony Barella for the par. Ladies and gentlemen, your 2022 Shelly Sharp Memorial Champion, Anthony Barella. Thank you. Thank you. Yeah. Yeah. Solid. Well, thank you. I'm going to catch up with our champ, <laughs> AB. Congratulations. Good to make you work for it, brother. Nice job, dude. Good yes, point, dude. Nice job. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. I'm the Disc Golf Guy, and that was my video blog. We're joined by our champion, Anthony Barella and AB. Last couple of years, your good friend, yeah. Adam Hammes, had taken it down. And of course, you guys were in the battle this year. What did it take to overcome him? Um, definitely just, I'm throwing the disc better than I ever have in my life. But the putt's a little off, so I'm just 
staying confident with my drives and just trying my hardest to hit all the putts I can. Your putting was pretty solid in rounds yeah. one and two. It was only a little shaky here in three, yeah, but a few holes, nine, ten, they yeah. seem to come out and bite you. Today you got revenge on ten. Mm -hmm. uh, what were you doing to get past that hole? Um, I really just throw it as hard as I could and not know it would be right. That was my main concern. On that hole. Yeah, very difficult. And I did it. So. And thanks to live scoring, we saw what Kale LaVisca was doing. Yeah. What were you doing watching that chase card as they were trying to hunt you guys down? Um, I was feeling pretty good. I didn't start feeling the pressure until like hole 17. I knew I had to agree that because 18 is a really tough hole. And I just wanted to have to lay up on it for the win. Well, it was very impressive. Anything you want to say to the world out there? Um, thank you, Innova. Thank you, Grip. And thank you to all my family and friends. Thanks, Daniel, for catting for me yesterday. And then, yeah. That's it. All right. AB dethrones his good friend and Adam Hammes. It was a great battle all weekend. Thanks for watching. We'll catch you guys at the next one. Sweet. Yeah, man. Oh, yeah. Congrats. <laughs> Thank one final shout out Spinners on the Green, your presenting sponsor of the tournament. Thank you to everyone that had any part in making this weekend successful, including my buddy Kyle working an extra camera. We got bonus footage, so that'll all unfold as well. But thanks for watching.